Hey guys, my name is Moon, and welcome back for more Omineko When They Cry. So, last time we finished up the first episode, it was very, very action packed. Even though it was the first one, right? A lot of action, a lot of stuff happened. But yeah, we have a lot of questions on who was doing it, what was doing it, right? And then we saw Beatrice in the tea party with Burn Castle, right? So, a very, very, yeah, a lot, a lot of questions to find out. And I guess we're not gonna find any answers in this one, right? Because we're still in the question arcs. But I'm very, very interested to see how Beatrice is gonna be in the story, right? Is she gonna appear in the main story itself? Is she just gonna be appearing in tea parties? We're gonna find out, right? So, my expectations for the second episode. I want more scenes, I guess, with the other characters, especially yeah, the characters who technically died sooner, right? For example, like uh, Butler's mom and dad, right? Rudolph, Kyrie, who else? Kraus. I mean, Shannon. Yeah, she died. She died kind of, kind of early, right in episode one. Who else? Rosa. I want more scenes of them. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see. What's gonna happen with the story this time as well, right? And Butler, Beatrice, I guess, kind of rivalry there as well, right? So a lot, a lot of stuff to see. And yeah, let's just start it. Okay, episode two, Turn of the Golden Witch. Good morning. The Golden Witch has been waiting impatiently for you. So please take your seat opposite her at the table. Have you rested well and deliberated over how you will play? The witch has high expectations of you and is determined to come at you right from the opening. Ooh, she's gonna show herself in the beginning. I too am looking forward to observing your moves. The difficulty level is first rate. The witch plans to make you surrender in an instant. Okay, so what is the first episode it says difficulty level is standard. This one, it's first rate now. Hey, right, we'll see. Let's just do it. Let's start it. All right, this is going to be good. Very good. Okay, so by the way, um when we see the opening of this uh the, the episodes right there's opening to them. So I'm not going to skip those. I'm I'm not just going to look at them. Okay, Shannon's talking, sorry. But yeah, I'm just gonna uh, leave it on the video. I'm not gonna cut them down. I'm, I'm just not gonna watch it, okay? Because yeah, it's not copyright or anything. And I guess the intros are pretty good as well, right? So anyways, uh, okay, here we go. Shannon is with George. <laughs> Shannon found a pair of hammerhead sharks swimming playfully in the tank. So now we're seeing Shannon and George having a date. So this is nice though, right? Because in this in the first one, yeah, George proposed to Shannon, right? So I like this one. Yeah. Seeing I guess how their relationship got built. So this is good. And I looked at his excited as a grade schooler seeing an aquarium for the first time. Mm. Almost makes me want to eat them. So, so no But yeah, they do eat sharks though, right? Yeah, shark fins. Yeah, people do eat sharks though. I haven't eaten a shark though. And I don't want to. Seizokan,来て美味しそうなんて言い出すのは世界中でも日本人だけなんだそうですよ。そうなんだ。uh not really i mean japanese eat whales right or am i wrong but yeah they do eat them right uh, <laughs> Shannon clutched at her chest with both hands in embarrassment. 
She apparently felt like she was being made fun of for wearing these clothes as she wasn't used to. Though George's face didn't show it, he'd actually said something so completely unexpected that it surprised even him. And he was as embarrassed as Shannon on the inside. However, when he saw how embarrassed Shannon was, he started to imagine he was teasing a girl he liked. And instead of embarrassment, a ticklish amusement welled up in him. No, he wasn't just imagining it. He really was teasing the girl he liked. Before now, he wouldn't have expected to hear a line like that anywhere these days, not even in manga or something. In fact, if he'd seen another couple acting like this, his first instincts would be to start throwing rocks at them. But even if someone were to start throwing rocks at us now, I'm sure they'd be no different than confetti celebrating our relationship. Now, I can't even remember those lonely days. Yeah, what day it is, by the way. Can we see here? It is... Oh, yeah, there's no date right now. Okay, now I can remember those lonely days when I felt jealous of couples who were completely oblivious to their surroundings. To use an old-fashioned phrase, these really are rose color days I'm living in. I am so entranced that I barely noticed that massive tank in the world's largest aquarium anymore. Instead, all I see are the expressions flooding across Shannon's face as she plays with the fish. この Despite its size, I hadn't thought of a tank as anything more than a tank. That's why I found her a metaphor. So interesting. So I guess every time we finish an episode, like the opening will be different, right? Yeah, when we did episode 1, it was the front of the mansion, right? And then episode 2, this is the intro. So I guess once we go different episodes, we're going to be seeing different main menus, right? So that's pretty cool. No matter how far humans broaden their experiences, they always end up viewing the world through the lens of their own values. Maybe that's why it's so interesting to interact with people who have different worldviews. I voice my thoughts on this. She responded. これは本当の海ではないかもしれません。でも、ここに泳ぐ彼らが海だと信じたなら、これは確かに海なんです。たとえ、有限の水槽の中だったとしてもね。海だって有限ですよ。うん。仮に無限だったとしても、私たちは生
Okay, what happens now? Ride on. What? Do I click this? Turn on, turn off the golden witch. Okay. No, I thought we could click it. Ushiromiya Butler. Also, basically opening. Okay, okay. I remember now. Yeah, in the in the first episode, they did this as well. They showed the names of the characters. Yes, George, Jessica, Maria. I was like, what? What is this? That's the opening. Kinzo Kraus, Eva, Natsui, Hideyoshi. Then more of them. I wonder who's gonna be like uh, for the adults, right? Who's gonna be here the longest? In in the first episode, it was Natsuhi, Eva, and Hideyoshi. Yeah, pretty much them, right? But Natsuhi was the longest one. So I wish this time it's gonna be the other ones, right? So we can learn more of their character, right? I want to learn more of, I guess, Kyrie, Rudolph, and Rosa the most. Oh, Beatrice is actually here as well. It's written here, Beatrice. Yeah, Rudolph, Kyrie, and Rosa. All three of them. Kraus. I think Kraus, we already seen what kind of person he is, right? So I want to learn more of the other ones. And I guess Shannon is going to be a major character in this one as well. Door of Summer. After we finished walking through the whole aquarium, we had a small late afternoon lunch at a restaurant with a nice view. The word buffet has the power to make any boy's heart leap. I was like that myself once. But with Shannon beside me, this buffet felt different. I couldn't shamefully pile on only the things I liked. I was, how should I put it, worried about my appearance and choose a menu suited for a snub. Salad and coffee. If I had been myself, I would have made a pile of oily stuff like yakisoba, mashed potatoes, grating, and so on. Shannon wa sonna teedo de onaka ga tariru no kai? Da to shitara, otoko ってのは hontou ni nenpi no warui ikimono rashi ne. On Shannon's tray, there was only tea and salad. Maybe the mere fact that I thought she was a whole plate short proved what I was thinking with a man's stomach. Okay? Or I was thinking. もう少しお昼を召し上がられているとお思いますよ。しまった。そうか。シャノンには僕が本家で昼食を取るとき、どれくらい食べてるのかバレてるんだったね。はい。だから今日はお腹の具合でも悪いのかと思いまして。シャノ
互いに見えっぱりだったってことになるねもう遠慮はなしにしないかい I smiled to show that I wouldn't make fun of her anymore and rose from my seat. せっかく沖縄まで来たのに、ゴーヤを食べないのはもったいないからね。Wait, they're in Okinawa right now? After finally coming to Okinawa. Okay. ゴーヤの炒め物でも持ってくるよ。Fried bitter melon. What is that? Fried bitter melon? シャノンも一緒に行こうよ。<笑>ほらほら。To anyone watching us, we might seem like an incredibly charming and embarrassing couple. But it's only after becoming a couple that you realize. To us, this exchange of words is everything in our entire world. But I wanna know though, like. Yeah, yeah, Shannon, how old is Shannon? Shannon's like 20 plus now, right? So I guess she finished school already, right? So, how many times do they meet, right, to get into a relationship like this, right? If、uh, the, con yeah, the conferences are pretty much almost yearly, right? So, yeah, I hope they give us more backstory to this、uh, once we go through the episode, right? That's why, and no matter how much everyone else stares at us with blank expressions, we never notice. Indeed, at this age, I finally understand the feelings of couples who want to endlessly flirt without any regard for their surroundings. After I returned with a plate piled up with fried food, Shannon arrived with a pretty cake. While laughing at her fake sto stoicism, we resumed our lunch. Luckily, our window seats gave us a view of a seaside scenery so grandiose that it extended even beyond our field of vision. However, because of the cloudy sky, we were only seeing a fraction of its usual beauty. So, this is the first time that the sun is a good one. So, this is the first time that the sun is a good one. So, this is the first time that the sun is a good one. So, this is the f i ここの海はきっと格別な青さを見せてくれたはずだよ。残念だな。あ、でも、お仕事の最中に見る海は、どんなに青くても灰色と同じです。でも、今日はお仕事中じゃないから、そ、Apparently Shannon was doing her best to say an embarrassing line. But I didn't let her go off easy. その聞いてもいいものでしたらダメ教えない<笑>ずるいですよそんなの When I was in elementary school I was always a kid who got bullied When everyone teased me I grew nervous and speechless to the delight of the bullies Back then I wondered why everyone teased me But now, teasing Shannon like this, I understand why. This is、uh, so much fun. I can play with her emotions however I please, and I can have them all to myself. Right now, I can't think of any greater pleasure. That's why I had to go easy on her. It's not as though I want to make her feel embarrassed and upset, so I decided to be nice and change the subject. Best not to be obstinate. お昼が終わったら海岸を歩いてみないかいひょっとすると雲が晴れて素敵な海が見られるかもしれないよそうですね行ってみたいですうんそうしようでもそのケーキも本当に美味しそうだね僕も同じものを持ってこようかな行けませんお昼にそんなに食べた上にケーキまで食べたら太っちゃいますよジョージ様は
秀吉様の血が濃いみたいですから気をつけないとおデブさんになっちゃいますじゃあシャノンは僕がおデブになったら嫌いになっちゃう僕はたとえシャノンがおデブになっちゃっても嫌いにならないよそそういう意味じゃなくてちゃんと体を気遣わないと健康にってああ母さんにもよく注意されるよやっぱり僕も太極拳とかを始めて運動しないとダメかなダイエットは無茶な運動よりも食生活の見直しから始めた方がいいんですよその上で運動を重ねないと効果が出ないんだそうですつまりそれはデザートのケーキは控えろってことだねじゃあ仕方ないからシャノンがそのケーキを頬張るところを眺めていてあげるよえー、っとその、うん、ケーキ丸々一つはさすがに食べ過ぎだと思いますけど半分くらいだったら大丈夫かもしれませんこれ本当に美味しいんですよ Dude, why is George's、uh, eyeglass always fucked up like that? Right, always. Hey, Shannon cut her own cake and tried to move a half to my dessert plate. I think it's fucked up whenever he's、uh, happy, right? Because when he's serious, we can always see his eyes, right? I mean, I, I guess it's mixed, right? It's mixed. Maybe when he's like super happy, his eyes,、uh, his glasses, I mean, fogs up. When he is super, super happy. I have no doubt that she wanted to share the delicious cake's flavor with me. However, I meanly pulled my plate away from her. She blinked in surprise. She couldn't seem to figure out I was refusing the cake or not. So I winked, opened my mouth, and said, Ah. With a partly embarrassed, partly exasperated face, Shannon offered a cake to me with a fork. Chomp. It tasted like cheap chocolate cake you might find anywhere, and yet it was exceptional. Because eating cake in such an embarrassing way, as if we were a couple of perfect fools, had been my dreams for many years. It made this cake's flavor heavenly. If the earth is destined to end, I wouldn't have any regrets if it happened right now. It was such a moment of bliss. After that, we gathered shells, ran from the waves, and enjoyed each other's company while walking along the beach. In the end, the clouds never parted. However, we both believed that the sea reflected in her eyes was a deep blue. ま、でも年に何度もない親族の会合の席で挨拶をするだけそんな君とこうして一緒に過ごせる関係になるなんて全然想像できなかったよそれはシャノンもでしょえっと私はそのうん想像だけはしてましたい,いえそのあの想像というよりはその妄想みたいなもので
いつも紳士的で思いやりのあるジョージ様とご縁があったらなってその妄想をしてただけでじゃあ僕たちの縁は君のその信じた心のおかげだね思う力には魔法が宿るんだよだからその魔法がきっと僕らを巡り合わせてくれた Is magic real, by the way? We'll find out. <笑>そうですね多分きっとそれは本当に魔法だったんだと思いますでもねそんなことはないんだよ僕の中でも毎年出会うたびに美しく見違えていった君の存在はとても大きくなっていたそして君にとっての僕も同じものだとしたなら今日ここに僕らがあることは必然の結果であって魔法や奇跡なんかじゃないのさうん、うん、奇跡はあったんですジョージ様 She stopped walking down the beach, gazing out beyond the sea. She said, I was bewildered by that slightly mysterious phrase, which I sometimes heard her use. Yes, it was. 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 でも確かにその魔法には私とジョージ様を巡り合わせてくれる奇跡を叶える力がありましたそれは何かのおまじないのことそうですねそういうものの類かもしれません一つ違うのはおまじないなんかじゃなく本当に本当の魔法ふん Sorry, sorry. Maybe it's all girls, not just Shannon, who tend to treat encounters as miracles or coincidences. For a man like me, an encounter with a girl is 70% hard work to try and to make her like you. 20% courage. I mean, I mean, George is rich, right? Extremely rich. <laughs>、uh, and 10% confidence. Or coincidence, I mean. Uh, the part that means everything to her is much a smaller factor in my mind. Maybe that way of thinking itself is calculating and typical of men. But if I said it out loud, it might dissolve all kinds of magic. To my mind, there were lots of coincidences, compromises, and expended effort on both sides before we gained the relationship we had today. At the culmination of all of that, we get to spend this joyful time together. And if she wants to call it magic, I've got no objections to her choice of words. So I'll stand up for that magic. So, that's it. Onaji Unme o Hyakai Kurikai Stara. Bok to Kimi ga Koyu Kanke ni naru Kekka wa Ichido Shika Okora Nai Mono Datta Kamo Shire Nai Ne. Tagai o Ishiki Shiai Nagara Mo. 僕たちは他人行儀な関係を今も続けていたかもしれないそんなよその世界の僕らから見れば今の僕たちはまさに奇跡のような関係に違いないだろうからそういうのじゃなくて本当に魔法なんです男の方にいくら言ってもこういうのは信じてもらえないんでしょうかカノン君も全然信じてくれませんし信じるよ僕が信じなくて魔法が解けたら嫌だからねジョージ様 In a small voice I apologize for saying something that trivialized her magic Shannon seemed to be glad to hear me say that After all, if two people believe in the magic of love, it becomes eternal. So, so. Bokara, Wagamama, Gahitotsa, Arundakado, 
聞いてもらえないかなはい何でしょうかそのジョージ様って呼び方嫌いじゃないけどもうなしにしないかいもちろん後宮家では対面もあるだろうから六軒島での普段まで強制はしないよでも二人きりの時はなしにしよううんうんそういうルールにしようルルールですかももし破ったらどうなるんでしょうそうだねルール違反には何か罰ゲームがないといけないかもしれないね。One, look at his eye glasses. It looks like he's gonna do, an, do something mischievous, right? <laughs> そうだな。何がいいかな。聞きたいい,いいえ、聞きたくありません。<laughs> George San. <laughs> But it's kind of weird though, right? Jo calling George,、uh, what do you call that? I guess Senpai. Not Senpai.、Uh, forgot. I mean, she keeps saying, I forgot now. Sorry, sorry. But it's much better if she call her, call him, I mean, George son, right? Much George Sama, yes, Sama. Like, it's kind of weird. You're in a relationship and your girl calls you Sama. George Sama. But yeah, much better to just call him George. George or George son. Oh, I heard her other name is Sayo. I kind of forgot about it. Honestly, I should write all of this. I should write this down. Yeah, Shannon's name is Sayo. And I remember someone mentioned that、uh, when Jessica had an asthma back then. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, I, sh I should write all those stuff. Like the important details when we see this from the character, right? So in the future, when we see a scene like this, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Yeah, it did mention this. So, the rule is not fair. I'm going to say that I'm going to say that. 今から君のことをサヨと呼ぶことにするよ。いいね、サヨ。サヨ。はい。I held her shoulder and drew her close. When I forcefully pulled her delicate body towards me, she dove into my chest like a doll. As I held her head in my arms, we both looked at the horizon. まっさおな海だね。この海を。As we gaze at the gray sea and a light rain began to sprinkle down, we kept listening to each other's heartbeats. Oh, it's raining very hard now. The sound of waves flows into my ears. No, it's a sound of an enraged sea. My body, bathed in painfully cold splashes, does not allow me to forget. It won't let me forget the memories of the day my old fate was broken and smashed. Once tomorrow's were literally like looking into the mirror. All I ever saw there was the person I already was. Tomorrow was absolutely no different from today. That was my old fate. But then, for the first time, I saw a different fate beyond the mirror. The witch whispers to me. She tempts me to take a bite out of the fruit of knowledge. She torments me, saying I'll be furniture as long as I stay in God's paradise. So I decided to choose the path of knowing love and try to become a person. Those days were like sweet honey. But at the time, I didn't realize that they'd be the start of a new kind of suffering. 
I've arrived at a small island on a motorboat I've only just learned how to use. No, this hardly can hardly be called a small island. But yeah, who's this now, by the way? Which... Yeah, who... Like, wh whose POV is this? It's a little more than a rock jutting out of the water. On this rock is a Tori and a small shrine. We didn't see this last time. Yeah, we didn't even go... Yeah, I don't remember. We didn't even go outside in episode 1, right? Technically. It was only the guest house, the garden, or the rose garden, and then the mansion. It was pretty much back and forth to that area, right? Didn't explore anyone or any place else. So, yeah. Hopefully, we'll get more of this in this episode. It was probably built to worship the guardian deity of Rokinjima. Even though I don't know exactly what it signifies, I know it has to be something holy. Even in a place like this, I've got to take just one more look around to see if there's anyone who might get mad of me for coming. I see nothing but the stormy ocean, Nijima looming in the distance, and the waves breaking against Rokinjima's steep cliffside. I ready myself. Timidly approach the shrine and take the mirror that lies there as an offering. The mirror looks old, cloudy, and dirty. That would probably make any normal mirror seem horribly cheap. However, since the mirror has been placed in this small shrine, its appearance seemed to give some sort of divine quality to it. And there's one thing I can tell. This is no simple mirror. It may seem like an old, battered mirror to a non-believer like myself, but it has a great significance. Is it really okay to break this after being captivated by honeyed words? No, this isn't really a mirror. This is the life I couldn't escape until today, my fate. I'll break it. I'll smash it and seize the life that lies beyond this mirror. If I don't smash it, my life will be a pair of facing mirrors forever. Nothing will ever change in the slightest. The witch whispers to me. She tempts me to take a bite of the fruit of knowledge. Or maybe I've already tasted of that fruit. After all, I already experienced those maddening emotions. Just as Adam and Eve felt compelled to pluck their fig leaves, I can no longer go on without breaking this mirror. I struggled with the conflicting emotions for many days before this moment. Inside my heart, the virtuous part of me kept on fighting the part that sides with the witch. Who is this, by the way? And now here I am. Did a part of me that's here right now win or lose? There is only one thing I know. To obtain something, you must be ready to lose something. Cowards who don't risk anything, who never try to change anything, will never be given the key that opens the path to a new future. That key is already in my hands. And that key is to break this. To smash it. Is there any other effort I can make as a furniture in prison in Rokinjima? Okay, so one of the servants... I mean, as we saw Shannon earlier. This is probably Shannon right now? Probably. No. This is the only way for me. Come, have courage. I'll free myself from being mere furniture. And by accepting a new kind of suffering, I'll become human. This is surely a small yet large trial I must impose on myself. Now, break it. I'll smash it to pieces, the eternally unchanging fate that imprisons me. I raise the mirror high. I think back on the days of conflict that came before. And finishing my reflections in the blink of an eye, I throw it down. And it's smashed. The thunder roars, crying out against me for my outrageous act. It is truly the hatred of angels trying to banish me from eternal paradise. I look down at the mirror, stumbling on my feet, broken in two equal parts. And after making sure I've accomplished my task, I scream up at the raging skies. Yeah. It is Shannon.
Thunder roars once more. I've already been banished from paradise. So I'll have to struggle on my own if I want to live. The witch told me. That is a single element of this world. To lose it means losing the world. Like how a canteen with a hole in the bottom can't be filled no matter how much you pump into it. Okay, we're done with the uh, intro, I guess. Opening furniture now. Is it the same intro or did they change it? I don't know. I didn't look at it. Okay, my mind wandered. Back in the days when I could barely imagine the happiness I have now. I was a middle schooler at the time. A normal girl who thought about love as much as you expect of someone at that age. But in truth, it was wrong of me to have that dream. After all, I am furniture. Why did he keep saying this? I think even Genji said this. Oh, did, did Genji say this, right? Last uh, in episode one? Yeah, I think most of them say this. Canon, Shannon. Furniture is nothing more than a tool, not a human. As a person less than human, simply receiving an education was an enormous blessing. So in reality, even thinking about falling in love was more than I deserved. The Ushurmiya Family Conference was a customary event held every October, but relatives sometimes visited at other times. Of course, they didn't come just to drink tea. On this day, Ava's family was visiting the head family on Rokinjima. Okay, does it say what date it is today? Uh, no date. Okay, no date. The three members of Krause's family and the three members of Ava's family had gathered in the parlor. And we're having a friendly chat about recent events. Genji had supposedly told Kinzo of Ava's family, our favorite family's arrival, but he still hadn't come down. He was probably immersed in his research and couldn't spare the time. I mean, yeah, Kinzo doesn't care. This often happened, so the others waited patiently for their fickle father to arrive. Oh? お父さんのところでたくさん勉強して早く手助けができるよう頑張りたまえ。ありがとうございます。今は父の紹介でたくさんの人生の先輩方に本当に貴重な勉強をさせていただいています。その
物を学ぶ姿勢と態度を学ぶんやその基礎ができてようやく生涯をかけた勉強が始まるんやでここをな勘違いしとるやつは生涯学べん石頭や国語算数で満点取れても会社じゃ役に立たへんうん全くその通りだよ秀吉さんの教育方針はいつも本当にご立派ですなジョージもまだまだ半人前やそれを常に忘れんで勉強に励むんやでよしなさいよあなたジョージはいっつも一生懸命頑張ってるわよねえ本当に立派ねうちのジェシカにも爪の赤を分けてもらいたいわジェンまだテストの結果を根に持ってるのかよ受験勉強は私なりにやってるってこんな席でまで言うことはねえだろうようせえぜ Once people started praising George for all his diligence, the conversation usually turned to Jessica, who hated studying. Jessica made an openly displeased face as though she'd known this would happen. Yari, yari. Jessica was being killed to each one. Scotia was still like an autobazkai mo manabu hitio na arun jana ikane. Ushromiake no kamon o se o hitori musume ga. それではみっともないなあらこれはこれで魅力的よね時代は変わるのよ Dude, as we've seen, right? I think Shannon is gonna be maybe the lead lead character in this story Maybe Shannon and George, right? So I can't wait to see Ava, I guess、uh, Ava Shannon,、uh, Shannon George scenes when she realizes, right? Like what's happening between the both of them. That's gonna be nice to see because in the first episode, she didn't, re yeah, she didn't really realize that, right? Until she saw the ring in, Sh or in Shannon's、uh, hand. Yeah, in episode one. I think it's the first episode of the first episode. そうそうやっぱエヴァおばさんは分かってますね<笑> Oh Natsu having headaches again 今日は頭痛が特に答えます大丈夫ですか夏日おばさん顔色が優れないみたいですありがとう大丈夫ですでも本当に月日が経つのは早いものね半ズボン姿で浜辺を駆け巡ってずぶ濡れになって帰ってきた日がついこの間のように思いますそれはジェシカちゃんも同じよね今じゃお化粧の仕方にだってこだわるレディーなんだから眉にこだわりがあるのね今日のあなたとってもキュートよありがとうございます誰も気づいてくれなかったんで自信なくしてたとこです A full smile rose to Jessica's face as a result of her own studies were finally appreciated. Ava smiled back in the same way. Then she turned that smile towards Natsuhi. Dame yo, Natsuhi ne san. Jibun no kono chisa na henka ni mo kizuka na kuchan. Kawai so na Jessica chan. I think it's her voice, man. 
Whenever Ava talks, it's just like mocking people, right? Every single time she talks. Yeah, the way she said that person, that person. <笑>ジェシカ <laughs> Jessica was still at the age where tests and entrance exams are pretty nerve-wracking. Recently, she clashed often with her mother who was enthusiastic about her education. <gasps> Jessica, who was trying to leave the parlor in a bad mood, bumped into Shannon who was pushing a serving cart filled with tea. Oh, Shannon! Shannon hadn't actually done anything wrong. Manatsu, who felt like something shameful to herself had been shown, lashed out her emotionally. I mean, she did this as well, right, in episode 1. First time we met Shannon and Natsu, she, she did this, yeah. It's the same thing happening again. This was something that often happened in the Oshirumiya family. But it seems Shannon wasn't strong-willed enough to just accept it and move on. She shrank back and a coward while serving the tea. She had the unfortunate habit of making more mistakes when she cowered. Her pitiful appearance ruined the peaceful atmosphere that had existed a moment before. It wasn't really Shannon's fault, but she thought she might be the source and felt a pressure on her chest. Her shaking fingers made the utensils clang and you couldn't have called it graceful, not even just to be polite. The more pitiful she appeared, the greater the silence grew. The more irritated Natsu he looked and the more Shannon cowered. Shannon's thin neck felt like it was being suffocated and choked by the reaper known as stress. At the time, George spoke brightly, blowing away the stiff atmosphere. This <laughs>当てるから。これは特徴的な匂いだから多分わかるよ。アールグレイかな。た、多分そうだと思います。多分アールグレイで合ってるよ。<笑><笑> ジョージ君は紅茶に詳しいのかね。お世話になっている社長さんに紅茶の詳しい人がいまして。紅茶を聞いているうちに少しだけわかるようになりました。ああ、お好み食品の社長さんかい。あの人、そういううんちくは得意
ういううんちくが味わいを深めるんや薬の脳がきと同じよね夏日姉さんも愛用してる頭痛薬の説明書今度はじっくり読んでから飲んでみなさいよ<笑>それはいい今夜試してみなさいええ試してみますシャノちゃんそのポットを開けてごらん茶葉の中にベルガモットを乾燥させたものが混じっているのを見つけられるはずだよお入っていますオレンジの皮を乾燥させたようなものが混じっていますうん多分これがベルガモットだねアールグレイの香りの主成分だよ匂いは鮮烈だから味がきつそうな印象があるけど、素直で飲みやすい味なんだよ。ミルクティーにすると、香りもまろやかになって素敵かもしれないね。みんなに注いでポットに余った分があったら、ぜひミルクティーにして飲んでみるといいよ。あ、あ、はい。ありがとうございます。ジョージ gave her a small wink. Shannon finally realized that George had kind heartedly swept aside the tense atmosphere in the room. And he had done it for the sake of Shannon herself, a cowering servant. Though she remained a family, it did not pamper their servants. Any display of awkwardness would be harshly punished. So it was rare for them to be given a helping hand like this. Thanks to George's kindness, Shannon managed to regain control of herself and finish serving tea without further incident. As long as she stayed calm, she could carry out her work elegantly and flawlessly. By the time the black tea was laid out on the table and its elegant scent filled the room, the atmosphere had completely returned to its former peaceful mood, and everyone praises George's knowledge. Shannon wanted to take, thank him for saving her, but it didn't look like she would get a chance. So she decided to at least thank him inside her heart, praying to the god that George would hear it as she pushed the serving cart away. George Nisan was in the world. Okay, so yeah,、uh, let us take a break here. And do we have stuff here? Characters. Okay, so what do we have new here? Oh, even Butler showing up here? Where is、uh, Shannon? Shannon. Okay, so. Is this new? Furthermore, Shannon is nothing more than a pseudonym. Was this new here? Yeah, sometimes they change it, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember if this was here back then. What else? George.、Uh, pretty much the same, right? Jessica. Yeah, pretty much the same. We don't really have new stuff yet. How about the tips? Tips. So, epitaph. Still, this one. So, nothing really new, right? At least right now. Yep, nothing new right now. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's the start of an episode, so it is a slower start, right? But it is nice because, yeah, we see George and Shannon there, right? Having some fun there, having a date, right? So, that is. That is nice to look at because in the first episode, we didn't really see that much. I guess only one scene of them showing a little bit of, I guess, emotion to each other, right? When George was proposing to her, and that was kind of it right after that. So I want to see more of that. And、uh, what, what was the thing earlier, right? With Shannon and the mirror? What was that? I didn't, I didn't understand it. I guess will, they will explain it later. Right? But yeah. Episode 2. I can't wait to see what happens in the, this episode, man. I mean, like in Higurashi, right? I mean, the story is always contained in the whole village, right? So basically, it, it revolves around Keiichi and his friends, right? Yeah. Episode 1, it was Keiichi. Second one, it was Mion. 
third one is different and then the fourth one was really different in higurashi right yeah third one was rika or rika satiko i mean for sorry sorry but yeah, and this one i wonder because they're in an island basically right so yeah we have this epitaph the first twilight a second twilight a third twilight is it still gonna be like that right are we gonna still see the same style of maybe it's gonna be a little bit different now right but i guess it's like the first twilight still gonna be happening but maybe in a different place maybe different characters this time right so that's gonna be very very or something to look forward to right to see how big of the difference it is and yeah especially the lead roles of the characters i think in this one it's gonna be george and i mean i don't think i oh well when you look at it right george and shannon is gonna be the lead for this one for sure right and again wait to see what happens here right i can't wait to see how it unfolds but yes we are going to continue this and do more of Mineko on When They Cry, episode 2, in the next one. So I'll see you then, guys. Bye-bye.